With 227 islands, it's no wonder Greece has a rich history as a seafaring nation, and that tradition continues today as millions of people, locals and tourists alike, rely on ferries to get around this country. In this video, you'll get a sense of what it's like to travel the roughly 200 miles over 9 hours from Athens to Crete in the most luxurious way possible on board a Greek ferry. I'll even rate it using the Jeb score. Hello Jet Setters, I'm Jeb Brooks from Greenergrass.com. Right now, I'm in Athens. I need to make my way down to Crete, and I'm taking a ferry. I've never made a video about a boat, so I hope you'll join me. Let's check it out. My day began in the very heart of Athens, but the ferry left at 10 a.m. from the port of Piraeus, which meant I needed to be in a taxi at 8.30. Now, booking this trip was overwhelming. With so many ferry lines and companies to choose from, it was challenging to find the right one. There are high-speed ferries, overnight ferries, and somewhat luxurious options, too. This is not a sponsored video, but we did find ferryhopper.com to be a really helpful tool to sort through all that confusion. I ended up booking directly with Monoan Lines, but on the ship I booked, the Festos Palace, it's possible to book a so-called deck ticket, which affords you passage and access to the public spaces on board. Or you could book a shared cabin, which has two beds and you may pair up with a fellow passenger you don't know. But if you know me, you know if there's a premium option to be found, I'm gonna give it a try. So stick around to see the most spacious and luxurious cabin I could find. And remember, I'd do it all for you. When I arrived, the port was bustling. It's the second largest passenger port on the planet. Now, as I mentioned, I'd pre-booked my passage, but needed to check in to get the ticket. A helpful Minoan Lines employee directed me to a kiosk, entered the relevant information, gave me my ticket, and then sent me off on across the street. Now, crossing this street was downright scary, with taxis and buses coming from everywhere, and not to mention huge trucks and motorcycles for that matter. I felt like I was taking my life into my own hands. This massive ship can carry 700 cars and almost 2,000 passengers. And given that size, boarding was a fairly slow process as passengers had their temperatures checked and paperwork verified. But once I checked in, I was escorted to my room by an usher and just could not believe the size of this space. Now, this room cost 100 euros, but with all the space, I don't think that's a bad price at all. The room truly had everything. Of course, uh, when I found out you could take a ferry uh, down to Crete, it seemed like a no-brainer. I've never done it and thought it'd be a fun, fun way to get down there. But then, when I found out that there was a room I could book called the Lux Deluxe, I was like, there's no way I can pass that up. We departed Piraeus right on time at 10 o'clock. Our next stop would be the island of Milos in about four hours. It would then be another four hours or so to our final destination of Heraklion on the island of Crete. Now a high-speed ferry takes six and a half hours, while a flight would only be 50 minutes. But I'm in this for the adventure and the fun and a little bit of luxury that only a Lux Deluxe room can offer. This Lux Deluxe room is so big, you can do almost anything in here. You can get a workout in. You can take a shower. You can sit on the sofa, you can sit on this chair, you can sit on that chair. You could watch TV, that doesn't work. You can call the reception desk. You can charge one, two, three devices. Polish your shoes. Or not. Brush your teeth. Try on the slippers. You can get some work done here at this desk. There's even five hours of free Wi-Fi included in your ticket. That's five hours to spend on greenergrass.com. It even has windows and a closet. Best of all, you can just relax and enjoy the views. Now, to be fair, booking this room probably makes a lot more sense on an overnight trip rather than this daytime schedule. But there was a lot more ship to explore. When I think of a ferry, I think of something pretty small. This was not that. With several restaurants and a pool, not to mention a bar, an arcade, slot machines, shopping, a kid's playground, there was plenty to do on this nine-hour trip outside of the room. Now, I wanted to get more footage of the ship itself, but it was completely full, and I try not to record fellow travelers in my videos without their permission. But despite all those amenities, the best thing of all was simply to step outside on a balcony and just enjoy the sea breeze anyway. This is just so relaxing. This ship is massive. It's 214 meters long, and despite that size, it can travel up to 29 knots. The a la carte dining restaurant opened at noon, and I headed in. 
pause the video here or head to greenergrass.com slash menus to see the entire thing. Food is not included with any ticket, even Lux Deluxe. The restaurant, like the rest of the ship, has what I'll describe as a, a shiny aesthetic. And what better way to enjoy a lunch somewhere between the Ionian and the GNCs than with an alpha beer? The veal appealed, and I wasn't too disappointed, although the menu did make it clear it had spent part of its days frozen. My waiter kindly offered a complimentary and unidentified dessert. I then headed back to my room to watch our arrival into Milos. Getting into uh, Milos now, um, this is our first stop, our only stop until we get into Crete. The ship's crew had to execute an impressive maneuver in which they turned the ship around and held it against the dock while some passengers disembarked, and others joined us for the rest of the trip south to Heraklion on the island of Crete. Our stay in Milos was short, only about 45 minutes, and I headed to the main salon to enjoy the views as we left. I was lucky enough to see our sister ship, the Nosos Palace. It was making the opposite journey, having left Heraklion bound for Piraeus this morning. The views of the island as we left were remarkable, and it makes sense. The Greek islands offer some of the most beautiful landscapes anywhere, and seeing them from this angle did not disappoint. In fact, just a few days later, I happened to fly right over Milos and got to see the ferry leaving port again. The rest of the journey seemed to go by quickly, and our timely arrival at 6.45 in Heraklion was preceded with a knock at my door. Just got a knock on the door. I've got 10 minutes in the, in the room. I'm going to take full advantage of this last 10 minutes by looking out this window and taking in the views. Overall, this was a fantastic way to get to Crete. Sure, I could have flown and saved a ton of time, but it wouldn't have been nearly as relaxing or as much of an adventure. Having the Lux Deluxe room was an aptly named luxury as a home base, but it wasn't necessary. Passengers who booked normal passage at a much lower price had plenty of seating to choose from, as well as access to the same amenities I did. The real question is whether I'd do this again, and I thought maybe the Jeb score might help frame up the decision. The subjective and tongue-in-cheek score is usually reserved for first and business class flights, but with a name like Lux Deluxe, why not? Let's consider the five factors. First, there's no lounge. It's just a downright dangerous street crossing, so zero stars here. The seat, in this case a room, was superlative. I mean, if this were on an airplane, I, I wouldn't even have words. Five stars here. As for the IFE, or is it ISE? Anyway, the TV did not work, but the internet was solid. Let's go with three stars here. There wasn't anything special about the food, but there was plenty of it, including from snack bars and several restaurants. I'll give it four stars, but that's really about volume more than taste. The service was not that great. After my first encounter with the Minoan Lines employee who helped me with my ticket, I had more than one member of staff embrace the stereotype of salty sailor in my presence, so I don't think the company really focuses on customer service. I'll give them two stars. That leaves the Lux Deluxe room on board the Festos Palace with 14 out of a possible 25 stars. The disembarkation process was smooth and well organized, and after a short walk I found my hotel and its rooftop with a sensational view of the port. Back to that question of the day, would I do this again? The answer is a solid absolutely. This experience is in a class of its own, and despite its low score, maybe in part because of it, I still highly recommend traveling this way. Between now and the next time, see you on the seas.